Hello, and welcome to the 12th episode of our Train Suit Building tutorial series. In this series, I'm using TRS-19, but most things also apply to other trains versions. In this video, I'm covering the basics about yards. So, let's load our route. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've divided yards into four main areas, even though yards in reality are much more complicated. The first is the main line, that's self-explanatory. The second is the yard ladder. The yard ladder is the series of parallel tracks that are used for sorting or storage. This comprises the main area of the yard. The third is a service area. This is where rolling stock goes for maintenance or to be refueled, or just to turn around in the case of steam locomotives. The fourth area are industries. Not every yard is going to have industries, but most yards will have some loading or unloading track for boxcars or goods vans or something like that. Some other yards might be more specialized and have more specialized industries. Let's begin with the main line. Now that I've laid out the course that I want the main line to take, the next step is to put down the longest siding in the yard ladder. This is important to do first, because this will impact how long your yard leads will be. Yard leads are the tracks at either end of the yard ladder, which are used for trains to back out onto when shunting or switching, so they don't block traffic on the main line, which is called fouling the main. So, I'll just place down the longest siding in our yard ladder. Okay, so this seems like a reasonable length for the sized yard that I'm going for. So, next I'm going to use the ruler tool to measure this length. Okay, so this is just about 2000 feet. So, that is the length that our yard lead should have. This means that any train that can fit within a single siding can be shunted out onto the yard lead. Okay, now I've placed the yard leads on either side of the longest track in our yard ladder. So, I'll just connect these with a junction. An important thing to note about placing junctions in yards is that it's important to keep an eye on the angle of the junction. It's easy to make junctions much too steep, which will then look a bit odd when trains are going over it. The next step is to put in the rest of the tracks of the yard ladder. So in this case, I'm going to go for five tracks. However, these five tracks will be in addition to this first track, since this first track is going to be our arrival and departure track. This is the track that trains that just arrived will stop on and wait to be broken up, and that trains that a switcher has just built are going to be shunted onto, waiting for a train to take them out of the yard. This arrival and departure track is usually the longest track in the yard ladder and should be kept clear when possible. Now I've placed the tracks I want in the yard ladder. And this is kind of a small to medium sized yard. A larger yard might have dozens of tracks in its yard ladder. The next thing is to actually connect these to the yard lead. To do this, I'm going to place a diagonal track across here, which is going to have the angle that I want the yard ladder to come in at. So something like this. For this, it's better to be a bit too shallow than a bit too sharp. So I'm actually going to make this a little bit more shallow by moving this end down a bit further. Something like this. Next, let's connect this piece of diagonal track to our yard lead. To do this, I'm going to place a junction roughly around here, and then I'm going to make it connect up to here. Also be sure that the tracks at either end of this junction are in fact straightened. Now we can delete this excess bit of track over here, and put in the next junction. So I'm going to repeat this process. I'm going to put in a junction roughly around here, and then I'm going to put it in over here. And then I'm going to delete this bit of excess track. Now I'm just going to repeat this process over and over again, until I've completed the yard ladder on both sides.
Now that I've put down the excess tracks to my yard ladder, I'm going to delete some of the leftover junctions that are no longer needed. Now that that's finished, the yard ladder is essentially done, although there are two things that you should consider when you're making your yard. The first is a runaround track. This is a track that goes off of the yard lead, then goes all the way around the outside of the yard ladder, and then joins back up to the yard lead on the other side. This is used for switcher locomotives or shunter locomotives to get around trains to the other side. This has the benefit that all of the yard ladder tracks can be used at the same time without having to keep one clear for getting around a train. So I'm actually going to add this here. The second thing to consider is adding a caboose track or brake van track depending on when or where your route is set. This track would usually either be added at the end of the yard ladder as an extra siding or it would be added to the outside of the runaround track. So I'm just going to add this here. An important thing to note about the caboose or brake van track is that it needs to be accessible from both sides. And that covers pretty much all the generic things that would be put in a yard ladder. So next let's go over the service area. Depending on the size of your yard, a service area may only include a water tower and a coaling tower and turntable for your steam locomotives or maybe just a diesel refueling pump for diesel locomotives. If your yard is a bit larger, then it may also have facilities to repair locomotives or rolling stock. In this case, I'm just going to put down a turntable and a water tower. So, as you can see, I decided to go with a roundhouse instead of just a turntable, and I've also decided to add a coaling tower. Next are industries. So these are loading or unloading platforms. Since a yard is a hub for freight activity, it makes sense that some loading or unloading facilities would also be located here. So I'm just going to add a small general goods unloading station. So, as you can see, I've added a small freight shed here with the capability of loading and unloading general goods. Like shown in the example here, these industries don't have to be located right beside the yard ladder itself. If a customer has a warehouse somewhere close by, then a rail track might go for a few miles to get to that industry to be able to switch it. The important thing is that it connects up to one of the yard leads so that local switching trains, which would be the yard switchers probably, would not need to foul the main line in order to switch this industry. So now there are only two basic things left. The first are signals, and the second are speed restrictions. So I'll just put in some dwarf signals first. I'll put these in at the locations where the yard ladder tracks merge into one another. Now I've finished placing my signals, and I've placed them in such a way that trains are not going to block one another. Basically just follow the same guidelines as when you're doing normal signaling along your route, like I've shown in my signaling tutorial. So now let's move on to the last thing, which is speed signs. These should be placed at the point where the yard leads merge into the main line. So for this example, I'm going to assume that the main line has a top speed of 40 miles an hour, so I'm going to select a speedboard which has 40 miles an hour as its speed, and I'm going to place this just before the junction into the main line, going out into the main line. This is so that trains coming out of the yard will pass through here 
and then once they're on the main line, they'll have the main line track speed. Next, I'm going to place the speedboard going into the yard. The sort of general rule of thumb for speed limits inside yard limits is sort of about 15 miles an hour. So, I'm going to select a speedboard that has 15 miles an hour as its speed, and I'm going to place it at the same location where I put the 40 mile an hour speed limit, only I'm going to flip it so it points the other way. As you can see, if you're coming into the yard, 15 miles an hour, if you're going out of the yard, 40 miles an hour. And you would of course place these at all entrance and exit points to the yard. And before I end this video, I've just got one more tip, which is, if you want to create a realistic yard, or really anything realistic to do with railways, then think about it in terms of functionality. Railways are built to be functional. Everything has a purpose, and usually things are built to be as efficient as they can be at doing the thing they're supposed to be doing. So if you keep that in mind when you're making your yards or whatever you're doing, then you'll find that the result will look a lot more realistic rather than if you're just trying to copy the way it looks in real life. Oh, and in case you're wondering how to find this little switcher locomotive, just search for Camelback, one word, on the download station. So, thank you for watching this video, I hope it was helpful.